A Greyhound bus from Indiana to Florida. Well, that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> it's actually going to be a video about the entire trip. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited and let's go. What's up, cool people? This morning I'm headed out from Indiana to Florida and uh, going to have a blast, I'm sure, on a Greyhound bus. <laughs> So well, I'm going to take you along for every step of the journey. You're going to see what we did, how we got onto the rides, uh, where we stopped, um, how long each like layover time was, and uh, what I did for that. So come along with me. Let's get started. Well, after a trip here with my dad, thanks dad for dropping me off. Um, we are now here at, uh, at Starbucks. I'm about like five blocks away at this point um, from CityLink, but we did go past CityLink, uh, which is where I'm gonna be picked up by Greyhound, and that was completely empty at this point. So uh, it's not a place where I'm gonna stop for right now. So we're just kind of waiting. I'll show up there in about a half hour, because I'm an hour early for my pickup right now. So we'll see. I don't know if I can see anything on tickets or, anything like that I'll check online to see if there's anything I can find but let's go all right and 30 minutes has gone by it's time to get out of here and get over to the city link station so let's go <laughs> all right and there is the city link central station still have a half hour if my bus is even on time but I guess at this point we're gonna wait. There is no place to wait inside because they're not open on Sundays. Any other day, at least here in Fort Wayne, they would be open inside. So I'm just gonna have to sit outside and be cold. Now we wait. It's supposed to be here at 11.15. We'll see what happens. This might be us right now. And it even says it has Wi-Fi on it, which sounds very nice to me. On the bus, let's go. Leaving right at 11.05. We're on our way out. I know I said 11.15 earlier, but it was 11.05. Let's go. Now we have a 10 minute break right here. I did forget to say they put all of our luggage underneath. Um, so I have a suitcase right in there right now and you can take that out um, when you come to stop. Uh, this is just a break, so I can go use the bathroom or buy something here at this conven convenience store. To limited Wi-Fi, a Barron's bus trip is as cozy as your favorite. All right, we just got off of our Barron's bus um, for uh, here in Columbus. So we're at the Columbus bus station right now. Um, we're waiting to get on to the next one. Comes at 2.50, so I have about 40 minutes waiting here uh, for that. And uh, everybody takes off all of their bags. And apparently, this is a, my next one is going to be a Barron's bus, but it's not this Barron's bus. But there is space inside to be able to hang out, sit, and uh, or just stand, <laughs> but be in some warmth. So that's definitely nice. So let's go. There are places here to charge your phones, God, there's and there's also a ticket booth up for a second, They play a movie for us on the bus. Um, <laughs> that, to, to be honest, I found that very annoying. It wasn't just like a, a, a movie that was kind of quiet in the background. It was like blaring, and it was basically an advertisement. <laughs> and then also like safety procedures, what you need to do. They didn't do that though until after everyone was on the bus, so we had stopped three times at that point and then they played that um so yeah it's to me I'm kind of like why, why even <laughs> we're already all on the bus <laughs> i don't know that it helps with anything but whatever it's fine <laughs> i'm sure they have to play it other than that every part of this ride has gone very smoothly so far um this is only the first leg of the journey and so we're going to have a lot more that we're going to be doing in just a minute here
literally been a minute and they're already here for our 250 departure to Cincinnati and Louisville. So that's where I'm headed now. He told us to get in line and then promptly went and got a smoke break. <laughs> it sounded very urgent, like we needed to get in line right now. Cincinnati and Louisville, single file line outside. I don't know why he couldn't have let us on the bus before he took his smoke break, but I'm very confused. He's on the other side of the bus right now, our driver. But yeah, this is probably not the best customer service that we've ever seen. We've now been waiting out here for a full 10 minutes in the cold. We are supposed to be departing in five minutes. No one has gotten on the bus yet. We've got two minutes now. He just let some people on the bus, but everybody in the line is still just waiting here. He finally let us on the bus after waiting 20 minutes in the cold. I heard rumor though of a canceled bus from Detroit, so maybe that's the reason why. I'm not exactly sure. Lines. Next set of stops on this bus is. said multiple times that um, we're leaving right at 5.05, so I don't want to lose my seat, <laughs> so I'm not getting off. Uh, they do have bathrooms over here. Each one of these is a little bit different. A lot of times the bathrooms are like in little trailers. Um, that's been, the last one was like that. Um, this one, it looks like they have a waiting room in a little trailer, and it looks like they also have bathrooms over here too. But yeah, this is more of an outdoor one though. Uh, where people wait out here. So luckily though, I'm not needing to lose anything and it's, uh, I, I can just stay right here and I don't need to get off. So that's nice. But we've got an empty trip, <laughs> but we've got an empty bus now, so which is cool too. So let's go. Arrived here at the Louisville station. We're late in the evening. Well, actually, we're, we're at about like 6.45 right now. Um, we're gonna see what comes up next, so let's go. We live in about five minutes here. We went inside. Apparently they're only doing reboards right now, but let's see if we can get in. I've just made it to my second to last leg of the trip, and this one <laughs> is gonna be a doozy. It's like eight hours, um, but I've discovered that just a few peanuts will fill me up really nicely. <laughs> So that's been fine. I've just had peanuts kind of throughout the day today. Um, so it's been plenty for me. But now I am on my way out. Uh, it's time definitely to take a bit of a nap now um, because we're not going to be done until 5.55 with this leg of the journey. We're now here in Nashville at the bus terminal. It's a really nice terminal inside. I was able to go grab a few snacks, but really I don't have very long, so it's not like I can actually go get anything. So I just got something from one of the vending machines that's right here. I really wish that I could just get out of here to go visit downtown Nashville and go see just everything that they have down here. Like I already saw a couple of little clubs and like some music venues and stuff, and I'm like, oh man, that, that would be really fun. <laughs> I'd love to be able to visit here sometime. Now this one, they obviously do have an old restaurant. Obviously nothing's happening in it now, but they've had stuff before. Now here they have a specific smoking area, and then they also have the indoor terminal here. And we're still waiting on our bus. I think they're cleaning it out um, and then changing drivers. Okay, so they just re called reboarding, and then they called reboarding again. And then they said, um, reboarding for Atlanta, which is what I heard. As a matter of fact, the people that came up with me said, hey, I have, see, now this is what they're doing. This is what we're expected to know what we're doing. And if we don't, then we get yelled at. Now, they initially said that I was going to get right back onto my bus. And I did not get right back onto my bus. 
So I'm still waiting. It's been quite a while. Now, I don't mind having a layover um, here because I was going to have like a two and a half hour layover in Atlanta, but that's not what my ticket says and nothing's been explained. Now, I do see that they have signs up here and they have signs over here, but nobody's explained anything about how to use those signs at all. And they've not talked about um, like how to do it at any, like no other stations have had signs. So it's not like it's well explained or it actually tells you what you're supposed to do or when the bus is gonna be here or anything like that. So what I'm really getting from this is that Greyhound bus is really not prepared for crowds like at all. Um, there's no microphone, there's no um, like signage, um, at least no signage that anybody knows how to use. Um, just all of that kind of stuff like if you fly, if you ride, if you go on the train, um, there are lots of different ways to figure out where you're supposed to go, but Greyhound does not have those options those ways to figure out where you're supposed to go instead it just feels like you're on the titanic <laughs> in more ways than one and it's sinking <laughs> and everyone is just yelling go here go here women and children on this side <laughs> or if you have this ticket go to this gate you know and it's just mass confusion it really doesn't help anything like i said i don't really mind waiting um i was gonna wait one way or another but this definitely feels like they are very unprepared but i fear this is kind of just normal business for greyhound i don't really know because i've never taken it before but i have I've, i fear that's the case about an hour ago they told us that we had two um, buses that were delayed one is delayed an hour and a half and the other is delayed two hours my physical bus is still sitting out there <laughs> taunting me. I mean, obviously it has to do with like scheduling issues or with having enough bus drivers or something like that. But uh, like I said, I already had like a two and a half hour layover that I was gonna have or layover, I don't know if that's really the right term. But now apparently there's something going on behind me here. Not sure what that was all about <laughs> but if you found this video helpful or videos like these helpful or I do things that you guys may not want to do like stay in certain hotels <laughs> or uh, take a Greyhound bus then uh, please say thank you <laughs> by either doing a one-time uh, donation if you want to do that or you can also go check out my uh, patreon if you would like to of course nobody needs to I'm, <laughs> you know there's like there are some extra videos you can get on Patreon, but there's no paywalls for other videos or other content or things like that other than the extra stuff I make on Patreon. But uh, if you want to say thank you, I appreciate that very much, and it helps you know, keep things going um, here and keep me going to different places. So uh, that's why I can afford this this time <laughs> to go down to Florida. So uh, thank you guys already, but also if you want to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. If a one-time donation is better too though, you can always do super chats or super stickers or <laughs> super things um, if you want to add those uh, down in the comments or on live streams. The real issue here is that it's New Year's Eve, which I have a feeling is actually why there's not enough workers right now. Um, and I'm here in Nashville, which is really fun. I want to be exploring Nashville and I would have gotten to explore Nashville if they would tell me how long it's going to be until my bus is going to be here but they won't explain things they won't tell i don't even know which which bus is the hour and a half bus and which which bus is the two hour bus there's just no way to know anything and nothing is explained and if you ask questions then you get yelled at <laughs> so it's not 
Um, so far, this, this evening, this part of it has really turned me off from this. We'll see if things change. Um, and I'm, I'm open-minded. I'm willing to see some good things. Maybe they were just overdone um, and just really, really overwhelmed like the workers were. Um, that's possible. I've, I'm a teacher. I understand being overwhelmed. But, yeah, it, it scares me. <laughs> um, so I don't really love uh, that. And we'll, we'll have to see what else happens here. Um, if there's some possibilities to make things better or if it ends up being bad and is it bad for both trips or is it just bad this time will New Year's Eve make a difference I guess we'll have to find out there's a new girl here now who seems to be quite a bit nicer actually <laughs> and who's answering people's questions I have a big hunch oh I think she may actually be the bus driver, though. I'm not sure, but I think she may be the bus driver. So now I'm waiting on my bus driver to get here. Once again, it's been taunting me all night. Finally, they're letting us back on. <laughs> More than two hours later. You can't see me, but I will say that these chairs go back very nicely, so you can actually take a little bit of a nap. That is one nice thing about it. All right, just got off the bus. I'm in a daze. <laughs> I was in a big sleep. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where I am now. Um, <laughs> so we're in Atlanta um, at the terminal. This is another large one with an, a restaurant also, but it doesn't look like they have anything there though. Barely any food left either. That's okay though, but yeah, no, no restaurant either. Nothing's available. So for me, very easy to fall asleep on the bus. I didn't have any problem with that. Um, felt really good. Um, and can't wait to fall asleep again. <laughs> Um, the seats lay back pretty pretty decently. I did have a neck pillow and I uh, lost it <laughs> in Louisville. <laughs> so I'm going to have to buy my mom a new neck pillow because <laughs> I borrowed it from her. Um, but it was very comfortable. It felt very good. So not a problem as far as that goes, even without the neck pillow. Um, and got like a good like four hours and something like that and then I'll be able to sleep more later um, on this next ride all the way down to Orlando that'll take from eight o'clock to uh, no to four four o'clock I think no yeah that's right yeah that's gonna be a long that's gonna be a long haul um, but yeah, hasn't been terrible as far as that goes. Uh, the thing that I see that's really probably the worst chink is um, that, that just makes things the most difficult for people is people who um, do not speak English really have trouble with Greyhound um, because there's very little communication and very little that's like in writing. Um, so I've seen a lot of people who don't speak English who then uh, there I mean everyone's in chaos at trying to figure out where they're supposed to go um, from most of the terminals this one seems a bit more calm than many of them have um, but like Louisville was pretty chaotic and uh, if you didn't speak English then that added a lot more difficulty to it um, so that is probably the worst part about Greyhound. Um, obviously, th that's not me, but for those who don't speak English, that is, that is a huge indictment against, against Greyhound. Uh, here they actually have... Marshall, they actually have a mic, so that makes it a thousand times better. If you can actually hear what's happening here. And here is also the first time that it's become clear what U.S. route, like whatever it is, um, 
it actually is. Like I've heard 1010, I've heard a whole bunch of those. So my next route is US 0632. Um, I was so confused by what that meant. <laughs> So uh, now, now I actually know what it means when they, when they say that, and you can see it on my ticket here. So know what those numbers mean. That makes it make a lot more sense if you can hear people saying that kind of thing. What I cannot figure out right now is <laughs> that we were supposed to leave Louisville at 10.15, but we didn't leave until midnight, and we were supposed to get here at 5.50, and it's... 505 now <laughs> so how how did it take <laughs> so much less time than what they had planned and it's very confusing to me i don't know if they took like a stop off of our list we did only stop once just at a at a marathon um i didn't even record it because i was too out of it but so maybe that's what i'm missing but I don't know, it just feels kind of insane. <laughs> it happened, it, it seems like that trip happened really, really fast. Um, but whatever, we're here, so. The bus picks you up over there, but I think it's because this is not done yet. I think this is where it is supposed to normally pick you up. I still have about an hour left to wait here, um, but they do have these mobile accessories. I've seen a lot of these um, here. Um, also, these terminals. A lot of people sleep, especially as it goes overnight. So, people sleep on the floor, they sleep on the chairs, things like that. Um, so, you'll see a lot of that. Makes sense when you're here for four to six hours, something like that, waiting on your next bus overnight. Yeah, I just was told by one of the actual workers up at the front desk that nothing on the TVs is correct. Like, that's a problem. <laughs> Greyhound, what, what are you doing? It doesn't make any sense. It's definitely way, way nicer in here that they, they have a bell that rings and then they have a uh, microphone, a person on a mic that comes over and they say 8.15, so I just heard that. There's the bell. I love it that they remind you in that way and they don't have people just screaming trying to get your attention. Come down this line and wait for the 8.15, which is what I'm doing right now. There's our bus right there. And she's letting us through. Soon, anyway. <laughs> this one kind of feels like a nicer bus, but at the same time, it has fewer things in it. Um, so this one does not have the USB ports, just regular plugs, which is fine, but not quite as helpful as some of the others that we've been on today. Well, Church's Chicken, not exactly a uh, conventional breakfast, but <laughs> it'll do. <laughs> Although it is 11.16, I just have lost all concept of time at this point. <laughs> speakers also so you can actually hear what's going on. Finally here <laughs> in Florida. Let's go. Here comes my Uber right now. All right and I'm here on my way to Universal Orlando. All right so my Uber just dropped me off. Now let's talk about that 
<laughs> whole experience there. Um, as far as, at least for this first half of it, because this is going to be one video, right now you're at the mid midpoint of that video um, for both trips that I'm going to take on Greyhound because it's a, it's a two-way trip. Um, so this first leg, actually everything, in my opinion, it's actually been somewhat decent. Um, now, the issue being Nashville because in Nashville there was no communication and they can fix that so easily. They can fix that by literally just having a mic and a speaker system so that people can get in for that. Um, that's all it would take, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, it's very frustrating that it took so much to be able to do um, that and that we were stuck in there just kind of like cattle. Like it really felt like just like just sit down and shut up and stop asking questions you know there every other place it was kind of like they were kind they were nice they weren't yelling but i understand why they were yelling because they didn't have any mics so and then that just adds to the chaos and adds to the frustration because you don't have anyone who can really talk and tell people what they need to do um, also the biggest issue that i see on the entire thing is that um if you do not speak English, then you're at a severe disadvantage. Um, also, if you are handicapped in any way, you're at a severe disadvantage. I don't think there's any kind of handicap accessible stuff uh, with that. Of course, I'm not the person to totally speak on that. That's just what I noticed. Um, so if, uh, if, if you or someone that you love, you know, has something more that they can add to that conversation um, and they want to down in the comments, please, by all means, <laughs> please by all means let us know if there's more um, that you can add to that as far as uh, handicap accessibility uh, stuff like that overall though I don't hate the experience um, it is a fairly cheap way to travel and even our being stuck in Nashville for so long really didn't cause any problems uh, because I think they already had it planned out. They knew that there was going to be a place where we were going to be stuck for a while. The big issue is I just wish that they would tell you, um, you, you could have two hours or uh, something like that. That way you could actually leave and go hear some music or something like that. Although I, I don't know if you're allowed to do that. That may be part of the reason why they didn't uh, do that because they don't want people leaving and uh, coming back and I, I do believe you're not supposed to have any alcohol because they said multiple times uh, do not uh, purchase alcohol when we stopped at different uh, stops like just gas stations um, so I have a feeling even that would apply there also even for if you had a six hour layover you you just have to be there you can't go like out to a club in Nashville or something like that which is what I would want to do I'd want to go hear some music <laughs> I don't really care if I drink just let me hear some music I would love that <laughs> so uh, but either way you know they I, I suppose that opens up a lot of cans of worms if people are leaving that station um, when they need to then board another Greyhound bus but Anyway, so this leg of the journey is done. Let me know what you guys are thinking about it so far down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And also, like I said, if you have any other experiences, please let me know um, specialized experiences to you or things like that. I'd love to hear about that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and let's move on to the next leg of the journey. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> One last day here at the hotel grabbing a little bit of breakfast this morning uh, so we're going to see if they have anything a little bit different today than they had the other day looks like they have biscuits and gravy they have turkey sausage pancakes pork sausage and potatoes it's pretty similar but a little bit different than it was the other day When I said it, I didn't think about biscuits and sausage gravy. I love this stuff. And you can either get a cheese omelet or a fried egg. I get cheese omelet. It's a rainy day today, the perfect day to leave. 
Glad I'm not leaving on a beautiful day that would make me wish that I was still here. Wow, it's really raining too. Also, I have my breakfast. What is the second leg of the Greyhound journey going to be like? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. We're going to go through every single part of it. And uh, this is the second half of that video, so let's go. Now, there is a place here to eat. Nothing's in there, though. I think this is hilarious, though. Food service is closed while employee is out for lunch break. Sorry for any inconvenience. We will return shortly. Someone never returned from lunch break. <laughs> But it's just a large room. There are some conveniences, some things that you can buy. Uh, technology, headphones, and then all kinds of different foods and drinks that you can get. Um, including also some mini mounts at this one. Now here they have a microphone system where they tell you from the desk over there where to line up. So they just told us to line up at door E. Another bus is at door D and another bus is at door B, depending on where you need to go. So this is so much more organized than some of the places where I've been. Getting their bags on right now. There was actually someone to help us too. And we put one, one set of bags at the front, depending on where you're going. So if you were going to the closer city, you're up front. And if you're going to Atlanta, then you're in the back compartment, which I don't really care about assigned seats, but your ticket does have them on the Greyhounds. The others, I don't think there was one. Now, at this point, I was very uncertain about what was actually happening here. Um, there was a family um, who I believe even was maybe some sort of an immigrant family who was uh, really yelling and being very upset about um, not having someone on the bus. What I soon came to discover is that their family had not gotten on the bus yet and they were literally one minute late. <laughs> I, at this point, it was like 59 or like one minute before we were actually supposed to leave. And this is our bus driver's reaction. At this point, our bus driver got so upset, he came off the bus and then just started screaming at these people. Now, he was wanting to be on time, but instead decided to spend the time that we were so supposed to be leaving, uh, just yelling at people for 10 minutes when he could have easily just put their bags on the bus and been done with the entire ordeal in 30 seconds. <laughs> it would have been so easy, so fast. They were right there waiting to come on. And he was yelling at them saying, no, you cannot come on because they were one minute. Hey, At this point, our bus driver was not satisfied with the terrible, horrible human being that he already had shown himself to be, and instead, he needed to add insult to injury by kicking off the bus. One guy who stood up and tried to 
and take the high road and actually say like, where's your compassion, man? Like you, <laughs> that's literally what he said is <laughs> where's your compassion. They were one minute late. You could just let them on the bus and he got kicked off for it. You gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, got another one. Got another one. Now, mind you, this guy did absolutely nothing other than stand up and just simply say, hey, like, you could have some compassion with these people. It's not that hard. Like, he wasn't even being disrespectful. <laughs> and, like, I notice disrespect pretty often, and I'll call it out if I see it. This was not disrespectful on the part of the guy that was sitting on the bus. But the bus driver, I do feel like, was being incredibly disrespectful Uh of really of everyone of their time and of these poor people who he kicked off the bus just simply for saying you know i i just would like to have them my family come on the bus with us <laughs> please one minute that's all and uh instead decided to yell kick people additional people off the bus even and uh just take up all of our time including his own which then once he got on the bus he was very very mad about anybody else <laughs> have a seat get you where you're supposed to be on time if you're late Unfortunately, the buses got to move on turn. Really, did I want to do that? No, but I can't have nobody disrupting this bus. So, let me go over some fundamental rules. So, I understand a little bit why he continued to do what he did and why he kicked off people. Um, I'm a teacher. I understand that he was trying to maintain some sort of control on his bus. But the thing is, every single bit of grasping for control that he did was really completely doing the, the complete opposite. I had almost no respect for him already at that point, And things just continued to get worse throughout the rest of this trip with him. Um, so uh, in that way, you know, it didn't really help anything at all. And you could hear people just mumbling in the background, just like, you know, should, should we leave? Should we, <laughs> should I do the same thing? Um, and then people saying, oh no, don't do that. You'll get kicked off. I don't want you to get kicked off, things like that. Um, so it was just a lot of fear and it was not worth it um, at all for what happened with this bus driver. Um, and uh, like he did get us there on time, but also he got us there on time, but he was so worried about that extra 10 minutes, but that extra 10 minutes was what he caused to happen, not what the family caused to happen. Like I said earlier, had he just simply said, okay, <laughs> I'll get you in, in here, let's just go really fast, it would have been just perfectly fine. But that's not at all the route that he chose. So that bus driver had already proven himself to be a tremendous jerk. But while he was yelling at one of the girls earlier on um, to go take their seat, he said, I don't care what seat you sit in, just sit down. Um, so I took that as leeway then that I could move someplace if I wanted to. And it turns out I could pretty much every time that I moved any other place with, on any other bus, there was no problem whatsoever if there was an empty seat for me to move into it. But I moved into this seat up at the front. It did say like restricted or like give this seat up if someone else decides to get into it. Um, I think that's actually what it said. Um, but it was some sort of like priority seating. But in this case, I nobody was there. So I went to go sit in that. He watched me sit down <laughs> in that seat. I sat down in it and uh, took a two and a half hour nap because I didn't want to be snoring in the ear of the person that was right next to me. Um, so <laughs> I just did that. And then I got a call from my parents. So I answered the call and was talking to them. And what, meanwhile, he heard me on the phone and he goes, 
why are you sitting there? And just like screams at me, balls me out that I'm sitting in the seat. You're not supposed to be sitting there. That's not your seat. You know, that's not your seat. You shouldn't be sitting there. And so, I mean, I'd already seen him kick people off. So I just decided not to make a big deal out of it. And I was like, okay, well I'll move. That's fine. So I moved back into the right seat. Um, but that was a, just completely ridiculous. It was one more time where it was just like, he just was choosing to yell at people as much as he possibly could. And in this case, now I was the victim. There was nobody who was really safe on this ride from being yelled at though. If you spoke up or did anything out of line in any possible way, you were yelled at. At our next stop, someone needed to use the restroom and that was apparently unacceptable. Also, she was not allowed to use the restroom um, even though there was an ability to go actually use the bathroom and she did say that our bathroom was gross. I didn't find that to be the case, but it, you know, one way or another, let the poor girl go to the bathroom. About 30 minutes later, we did finally go to a stop where we could uh, use the restroom and get some food, <laughs> something to eat. Um, it was just a convenience store, uh, but it was disgusting, <laughs> especially as far as the, the uh, like buffet went. It was just horrendous. <laughs> there was actually food on the floor. There was it, like it was it was so gross. <laughs> So I finally decided on just a few items that I could use <laughs> to just kind of snack on for the rest of the trip um, because at this point we didn't have a whole lot of time left. We're here in Macon, Georgia right now. Well, this looks very familiar. Back in Atlanta again. Flex schedule 2415. Mount Gainesville, and Orlando, Florida. I love the way they can talk over the PA system like that. That makes things so much easier. They did that in Orlando. They've done that here consistently also. A little editing here inside the terminal. Just waiting. A little light editing. Well, except for having a bus driver who wanted to yell at everybody for everything, including myself, and an immigrant family also who he didn't even allow to come on the bus because they were one minute late. It's been actually a pretty decent trip. This one has been very smooth. Everything's gotten um, where it needed to go ahead of schedule. We didn't need to wait on anybody. Um, see if Indianapolis is the same. Just to see if it works, I'm gonna see how this entertainment stuff does. If it works, I'm assuming this is kind of like your in-flight movie, so we're gonna see what it's like. Let's let's go for it. Well, so far it's worked like immediately. I mean, I went on and I found Best Wi-Fi. It has a lot of numbers after it. Came up with this right away. It just says open up your web browser, but I'm gonna press connect. Okay, maybe it's already connect it's already connected. I Thing. Yeah, sure. Okay, and then that opened up my web portal then. Okay. And look at all these, the selection of movies. You can watch The Big Bang Theory. Oh, okay. I guess I just see two selections right now, but go on. Indiana Jones, Oppenheimer. Wow, these are pretty decently new movies. Even the Barbie movie. Well, maybe I'll find something to watch tonight. I have quite a while anyway. Okay, and then let's see what the TV shows were. Oh, well, they, they even have others. So you have action movies. The Barbie movie is an action movie? Got The Vampire Diaries, Shameless. Not very many TV shows. And then this will, I believe, still work for you, right? Let's just go to my studio. Yeah, so it looks like other websites are a little bit slower. Also, I hurt my screen. <laughs> this is why I need some Patreon money. Yeah, much slower than the than the Greyhound website. The Greyhound website's much faster. This is this is very very slow. I don't know that I'll actually watch anything. I just wanted to see how that actually works so that we can kind of know together. So there you go. There you have it. But because this one is taken so slow, I'm wondering if even these like this website seems to be working really well but does it actually play you know what we're gonna do something that won't get me demonetized 
Let's just do Ant Man. Did I watch? Okay, it looks like even this is gonna have quite a bit of a lag on it, maybe. At least a large loading time. Let's see how long it actually takes. Yeah, I'm not necessarily encouraged by this. <laughs> I think doing my own editing is far preferable to the crappy bus Wi-Fi. <laughs> here right now back in Nashville once again tell you what though I'm really hoping I don't get stuck here though <laughs> again like I, I hope this doesn't end up being like a three-hour layover I hope it is just an hour and a half but I'm not really sure they just called for everyone going to Indianapolis to line up at Gate G so we're reboarding right now let's go Now in Indianapolis, there is a spot to hang out right here, but there's also a Wendy's, so I'm going next door to grab some breakfast. You can see downtown right over there, kind of a different view of downtown. We're quite a ways away from downtown Indy, but get some stuff for breakfast. Let's go. Now it's risky to leave to get breakfast because they could leave without us, but I don't think that they're even in there. They told us we all had to exit and that we'll be getting a new driver, but that is something to be concerned about if you leave. You could get left behind. So this is my bus, there's my suitcase. Go inside, eat, and be ready to go. Okay, I am groggy. We're in Louisville. We are not in Indianapolis. <laughs> this is definitely the Louisville station. I walked in here and I was like, oh my word, I've seen this place before. <laughs> they called for reboarders going to Indianapolis. Took about five minutes. <laughs> I sat down for literally like two minutes. Anyone down for a Colts game? We're here in Indy now. I've got about a three hour ride from here and I've got only about 20 minutes to get on my white bus, my white MCI bus. So let's go. Let get your stuff out from underneath over here. Got my luggage. Let's go. The only problem is that I kind of like to go use the restroom. <laughs> so we'll see if I can do it. Baron's bus runs out of Fort Wayne, but they're all in cahoots together. Ooh, this one's the first one that's actually had a functioning restaurant in it. Oh my word. <laughs> Indy, you're actually nice. Wow, and actually it is a nice space. Like this is a nice big space to hang out. I love this. There's also connections to Amtrak. Oh, this is a great little spot. Got vending machines. The place is clean. I'm impressed, Indianapolis. It does look like they only are able to communicate by yelling here, though. Not, no mics or anything. So I definitely needed to use the bathroom here, so got here just in time. They were doing last call when I walked, walked up to the door.
have this whole bus station that's not being used to. I'm not sure why we always park over here, but that's where Barron's bus apparently parks, is over along the street. Um, I mean, I guess at least it's, it's a nice transportation hub one way or another, so. But it's time for me to go grab probably some lunch somewhere, and my brother is coming to pick me up. I'm also going to see if the City Link station is actually open today. It may not have been open on last week, on Sunday, because it was a holiday. No, it's just closed Sundays, always. Now we're back where we began, though. So thank you guys so much for hanging out uh, for this very <laughs> somewhat long video, maybe. So we are back where we started from. Um, I'll be giving kind of an opinion once I get home and talking about kind of the total thing. Uh, but thank you guys so much for hanging out and let's go. Overall, it was a very eventful trip. <laughs> I, I would say um, it really wasn't that terrible overall. Um, there were definitely some not great experiences. Um, one of them, of course, was that bus driver who really ticked me off. But also when I was stuck in Nashville, um, it was incredibly long and incredibly disorganized. But beyond that, I didn't even talk about this in the video. There was a guy who came up to me and talked with me for a little while. And uh, he was really nice, really fine. And then all of a sudden he just went, that guy over there, he's saying that he's going to kill me. <laughs> And it was like just completely out of the blue. There it was nothing to it. Um, he left and took took like an Uber uh, to get away or a taxi to get away. There were also some gunshots that we heard the second time that we were in Nashville. So on my way back north, uh, we stopped in Nashville for just a little while and we heard gunshots right outside. Uh, probably someone just opened fire, um, open firing, but still... It was kind of freaky. Um, all the security guards got up in arms and uh, went out and kind of checked out what was happening and all that kind of stuff. I did. I never felt like they didn't have it under control as far as that goes. And I suppose you could have that many people. And uh, the reason why there's some like yelling and really trying to make sure that you're controlled is because things could get out of hand fairly quickly or fairly easily. And I'm sure they've seen that happen. Um, I'm sure even with that bus driver that really ticked me off I'm sure he's seen a lot of crap and that's probably why a lot of this uh, like frustration and anger came out in him uh, from something like that I'm sure this isn't his first rodeo but also I don't know that it was necessary in this one case uh, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been necessary in the past so um, not trying to completely judge but you know if someone's really going to be a jerk about some things then that kind of <laughs> warrants some criticism i think especially in this kind of situation um but anyway uh it's definitely a a way to go <laughs> I'm not sure that I would ever do it again. Let me know down in the comments if you would ever take a Greyhound bus somewhere or if you have. And let me know if you have any stories about that. I'd love to hear what your thoughts have been down from the past and uh, kind of maybe horror stories or success stories of being on Greyhound. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out for this entire thing. Let's go. <laughs> I'd like to thank my patrons for all of your support. Uh, it is your support over the months that has helped me be able to actually take this trip. So uh, thank you so much and let's go. Hey, thanks for watching. I release theme park related videos at least a couple times a week. So press that subscribe button if you made it this far. Also check out similar videos in the playlist to the right or find my newest video to the left. Thanks again and let's go.